Welcome to the motherland, comrades. Nintendo? Nintendo, says President Putin as he aggressively roundhouse kicked my face, saying, I don't know what that means, but I'm very afraid to go to sleep now. But hey, while we're here, let's check out some quality Russian bootleg games. Starting with Ben 10, released on the Sega Genesis. You know, the Ben 10 cartoon that was released in 2005 had a game on the Sega Genesis that was released in 1989. Why? I don't know, it's best not to ask questions. So the story of the game is... Gah. Aliens are attacking and you gotta stop them. I have a very strong feeling that I'm not gonna enjoy myself. Well, when I'm right, I'm right! The game is an arcade-style beat-em-up. It controls technically fine, but the lack of sound effects makes every hit less satisfying than it should be. Let's take a quick look at Final Fight. Whenever you bash an enemy, it makes this satisfying noise, like... It makes you feel accomplished. Like, yeah! I hope that did hurt! It's also only single player, which in games like these, multiplayer is always the best way to go. But I get it. Who else are you gonna play as? The grandpa? I don't think so. So, okay, I'm walking through these stages, punching around the same three enemies, literally the same three over and over again, and it got me thinking. Why am I playing as regular boy Ben? When do I get to transform into the 10 aliens? I wanna play as Heat Blast, or Accelerate, or Forearms. These names could use some work. You play through this entire game with the same basic punch kick combo. No, that's fine, that doesn't get boring at all, not especially after the first 90 seconds. Oh dang it, I died. Oh, who did this? I don't want to see my beloved cartoon characters all bloodied and beat up. You savage, Russia. The final stage, here we go. It's the same as the others. Who's the final boss, though? Finally something new? Nope, the game gives you the middle finger by just making the final boss one of the three basic enemies, but with a lot more health. Punch, kick, punch, punch, kick, punch, punch. Hooray, I did it. I feel so satisfied. Also, apparently we're in space. Good. Call of Duty Go- wait, what? Whoa! Man, this series sure has taken a new turn. I almost got a cut from all this edge. Come here. I'm gonna get you. It turns out, however, that this game is actually just another game called Time Tracks. It's literally just the same, and was actually released on the Sega Genesis. But Putin, being a huge Call of Duty fan, many people don't know that, said, No! It's Call of Duty Ghost now. Resell this 20-year-old game in the year 2013 under the name Call of Duty. Nobody will ever know. Is nothing sacred like this next game? Is that... Spongebob? Yup. Oh god, that's him all right. This game is just a reskinned cool spot. Yeah, that mascot for 7-Up in the 90s that got its own game for some reason. SpongeBob is the only thing that's changed here, so there's not much to comment on apart from how nightmarishly hideous he is. But hey, who am I to judge? I wonder what the cartoon is like in Russia. Do they even get SpongeBob? Is it rewritten to have Bikini Bottom living in a communistic society where everybody is starving due to the poor economic structure? And Mr. Krabs ends up poisoning plankton so there can be no competition in the food industry? Let's watch some episodes! Let's not watch some episodes. Kung Fu Panda 2! Man, they really will just make a game about anything, won't they? I... I don't know what's going on. Do I have to put in some secret agent codes? Well, I guess this is a good time to learn the Russian alphabet. A, B, C, something, E, T, G, 4, tennis, racket, K, uh, uh, Russian is hard! Okay, so let's start off with the positives. This is indeed... a game. Now for the negatives. Everything else! Anytime you do anything, they let out the most obnoxious voices I've ever heard in my life. Also, this looks more like a fight between the Trix Rabbit and Chester Cheetah. For this next fight, I picked Sid from Ice Age, but his in-game character looks nothing like him. This looks more like Master Splinter if he took up Muay Thai. Practice harder, and remember, 
Go, Ninja. Go, Ninja. Go. Jesus, Poe. You've been hitting the gym. It's really paying off. He's so thick that whenever he's in the air and comes back down to Earth, it glitches out the game. I mean, hey, I'll be fair. This isn't the worst fighting game ever. It's very fast-paced and the controls are fairly responsive. If you're a casual fighting game fan like I am, this game is perfect for you because you can just play like I do. Like this. Lego Batman on Sega Genesis. You really can't make this stuff up. Oh my god. I mean, hats off to the guy who recreated a Lego art style on a 16-bit console. That's some serious love and dedication to Legos and video games. The game is a very innocent side-scrolling beat-em-up. Make it to the end of the stage, punch some baddies on your way, simple enough. The first few stages take place in Gotham City, makes sense. But then completely out of nowhere, we're in the North Pole! What?! I'm really missing out on the story. The Russian alphabet has failed me. So the last few stages of this game has Batman going around punching a bunch of Santa cosplaying thieves. It's official. This is the best game ever. You know what's actually really awesome about this game? The music. They're all covers of famous and beloved video game music, such as the Star Fox theme, which you just heard. All given that Sega Genesis sound. Wait, what's this? Oh, for the love of- There's another one of these?! Come on, Russia! So, here we have Captain Jack Sparrow collecting coins. That's the game. Here's a montage. The wiki, though, gave me a plot synopsis, so let's check it out. This is the tale of Captain Jack Sparrow, pirate so brave on the seven sea- These are just the lyrics of that Lonely Island song, aren't they? What? These Russian games are making me want to drink heavily. And I don't even drink. Ugh. Here's Angry Birds on the Famicom. It's a puzzle game where you need to collect the birds and kill all the pigs to exit the stage via this random door. The game reminds me of an NES game called Bugs Bunny's Birthday Blowout. It was a blowout, all right. Blow out your ass. Oh, wait, no, that was a different one. Whatever. Once you complete all those stages, the game then becomes the Angry Birds we all know and maybe love. Literally, it's just Angry Birds. This version, however, is a lot more difficult, considering the NES isn't capable of physics. So you can't knock over ledges to crush the pigs, or knock them off like you would in the mobile version. You have to position your bird's trajectory to hit exactly on the mark. This is less fun. Believe it or not, there's actually another style of Angry Birds gameplay in this cartridge, where it's some weird platforming segment. The bird gets legs and shoes hopping all about. I don't understand life sometimes. I just feel lost. Out of all of these Russian masterpieces, the only one that seems somewhat normal is this game, Felix the Cat. It's a really charming and fun 8-bit side-scroller. For those who don't know, Felix the Cat was one of the first cartoons ever, making his appearance in 1919, almost a hundred years ago! What?! Felix the Cat had this magic bag of tricks that could pretty much do anything. And that's how the game works here. Felix's bag is the driving force for the gameplay. He shoots out a boxing glove for offense, turns into a car, a tank, you name it. It's really charming and reminds me of Kirby in a lot of ways. Not only being able to utilize all kinds of wacky new abilities, but the world also feels so alive. With the trees having faces and other derpy looking enemies, I definitely recommend this game. Oops, I died. Well, I played a good amount of this. I think I'm done for today. I guess this means no? Het? I don't want to continue. What the hell? I don't want to see that. Nobody wants to see that. Why would you even consider doing this? I can't imagine anything more terrifying. Oh, hold the phone. There's apparently a Russian Minions bootleg game. There we are. The most horrifying thing known to mankind. Minions.